This is the new 2-in-1 36-volt Makita battery-powered blower DUB363 with both blowing and vacuuming functions in one. In today's video, we'll completely focus on this device to see if it's worth the investment or not and what features the device offers. But before we get started, if you haven't already, quickly subscribe to this channel for free and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. The current price of this leaf blower, as always, can be found in the video description below. So let's get started. This is the most well-known Makita battery-powered leaf blower, DUB-362. And here's the supposed successor, the DUB-363. The difference is that the old device was only a leaf blower, and here we have the 2-in-1 version, which means both a leaf blower and a leaf vacuum in one. However, today we'll exclusively focus on this version. If you haven't watched the previous video, you can do so now in the upper right corner. First, it's noticeable that this is the solo version indicated by the Z at the end, which means it comes without a battery and charger. Furthermore, we can already see the leaf blower here along with the collection bag. On the back, as always, we have all the specs. What do we see here? A permanent lock, adjustable length of the blowing tube, two different settings, and here, the shredding wheel. But that's it from the outside. Let's now move on to what's included in the package. You can already see that there's quite a bit of accessories here, also because it's essentially two devices in one. Let's start on the left side. Here we have the user manual, warranty information, safety instructions, and even a promotional brochure. Next is a white collection bag for the shredded material. Let's see how it looks after a while. After that, we have a nozzle reducer for the blowing tube, another piece for the blowing tube, the curved piece for the leaf vacuum, the first section for leaf suction, and finally, in this compartment, the second section for suction. There's nothing more in this compartment, and in the other one, you'll only find the leaf blower itself. Yes, I've now neatly laid out all the accessories together here, and these are indeed all the tubes you need for both blowing and vacuuming functions. I would say let's start with the leaf blower and its blowing functions first, so let's set these four pieces aside for now. Because for the leaf blower function, we only need these two blowing tubes here and, of course, the leaf blower itself. As the device stands before us now, it's already fully assembled and ready for use as a leaf blower. It differs significantly in shape from the DUB362, for those who remember, simply because it has both blowing and vacuuming functions. On the underside, we find the plastic tube. You can easily place the device on it, and it's actually quite large, providing good stability to the device. You can already see it well. There's another handle integrated into the base on the top side. This handle's also rubberized to provide better grip and is mainly used for the vacuuming function. We'll go into more detail about this later in the video. Right in front of it are the two 18-volt battery compartments. Due to the suction and shredding function, the device relies on this concentrated power. In this case, two 5 ampere hour batteries are attached and, of course, the device for blowing functions. And if we take a look, the blower is really well balanced. In my opinion, they did a pretty good job here. The weight with two 5 ampere hour batteries is approximately 5,125 grams, not necessarily lightweight, but acceptable for the function and performance. Of course, you can also see that a carrying strap can be attached. This is especially necessary when we use the vacuuming function. On the left side, mounted above the large Makita logo, already visible all the time, is the switch for activation or deactivation. This is a touch switch. Simply press once to activate or hold it down for deactivation. Also noticeable here are stage one and stage two. A quick press allows you to switch between the stages. Furthermore, visible on every corner. We can see it here and also up here in the corner. Brushless, meaning there's a brushless motor inside that drives the fan wheel. Just like in the new version, the DUB184, in case you haven't seen it yet, as I mentioned, you can find it in the video description below. Here we have the trigger or this new lock. With this, it's possible to continuously adjust the airspeed or the airflow with the trigger or lock the trigger at a specific level using the thumb lock. This allows the leaf blower to achieve maximum airspeeds of a whopping 65 meters per second or 13.4 cubic meters per minute. As a result, the batteries deplete quickly. 
We have the advantage of having two batteries, but probably only 15 to 20 minutes of maximum performance is possible. But before we move on to practical use, a brief note about assembly. Regarding the leaf blower, we have the blowing tube at the front where the air comes out, and on the back there's a fan wheel where the air is sucked in with or without leaves. The blowing tube itself works with this plug-in system, as with other leaf blowers. We can choose from three different length settings for the blowing tube and easily adjust it if needed. Additionally, you can attach a nozzle at the front, as you can see from this small protrusion. However, these are not included in the package and must be purchased separately. There are flat nozzles and round nozzles available, but in my opinion, this blowing tube with the three settings is perfectly adequate. You can easily remove or attach this blowing tube here, but the one beneath it is securely screwed in place. There's a small Allen screw on the blowing tube itself for this purpose, but it can also be loosened by hand. If that's not the case because the screws tighten too firmly to be loosened by hand, fortunately we find a small Allen key at the base, which we can use to loosen the screw. Also note that the leaf blower cannot operate if you haven't properly tightened these two screws either on the blowing tube or on the cover of the fan wheel. There's a mechanism in place that detects whether the flap is only open or closed, preventing accidental hand contact. Quite practical for sure. Initially, I searched for a long time wondering why the leaf blower wasn't working because I hadn't assembled this blowing tube, so always make sure to tighten the screws properly for the leaf blower to function. Likewise, we find a small screw on the cover of the fan wheel to loosen so that we can open it, revealing the fan wheel along with the three shredding blades to turn the leaves into fine mulch. We'll see how finely the leaves are shredded in practice later. But let's briefly look at how to convert the leaf blower into a leaf vacuum. Under the fan wheel cover, as you can see quite well, there's a mechanism where the suction tube clicks in. Additionally, the lock symbol indicates in which direction it's locked and in which direction it's released. So simply attach it and lock it. Here, there is also a small screw that we need to tighten completely so that the leaf vacuum recognizes that the blowing tube is correctly mounted. Next, three notches will click into these three recesses, but you can also see it quite well here. The only thing to note is that there are two small arrows, one on each suction tube. These must align with each other, otherwise you cannot mount the next suction tube. Next, we need this curved piece, also with a screw, so we can mount it correctly. This is now attached to the front, just like the blowing tube, and then secured with the screw. Continuing with the text, we move on to the leaf collection bag. It looks like this, completely in white. Whether that makes sense for a bag that collects quite a bit of dirt is up for debate. On the underside, there's a zipper from right to left for opening and emptying the collection bag. It actually gives off a relatively solid and robust impression, even if we look at the seam from underneath. On the right side, you'll find the air outlet through this mesh, and on the left side, the air intake. This is simply attached to the elbow piece with the opening and then tightened with the strap. At the other end, there's also a small strap for clicking in, so we can ultimately hang the collection bag on the leaf vacuum. With this, the leaf blower is now ready for use as a leaf vacuum. As I mentioned, there's the one on the right and left that you can attach, so you don't have to hold the leaf blower, or in this case, the leaf vacuum, all the time. Also well thought out are the two handles at the top. This makes it easy to hold the leaf vacuum, and in terms of weight, it's still okay. Furthermore, the opening on the collection bag is conveniently located on the side, so all the dusty air is blown in that direction. And with that, the leaf blower is completely transformed into a leaf vacuum. I would say let's move on to the practical demonstration and take a closer look at the device. Alright, here we go. Both 5 ampere hour batteries fresh from the charger, so we have the full power at our disposal. And here's the easiest test with the linden blossoms on the lawn. Just to point out at this stage, this leaf blower achieves incredible air speeds of 65 meters per second, which is extremely powerful when compared to the previous model.
I believe there's no need for further commentary because, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Let's continue with the device in a tough test in the blowing function. We have branches, oak leaves, and even some stones in front of us, and some of them are quite thick. As you can see, the leaf blower is handling it exceptionally well. There's really nothing left behind. Compared to the previous model, there's a significant increase in performance here as well. The battery will probably run out faster with this level of performance, but we'll see that at the end of the video. Now, let's move on to the suction function, which I've been eagerly anticipating. We're still on maximum power as before, and it's performing quite solidly as you can see. You could theoretically compare it to a corded device. In total, it's 13.4 cubic meters per minute, just to clarify that. You can see that the leaf blower, or in this case, the leaf vacuum, is doing a pretty good job of clearing the leaves, leaving nothing behind on the lawn. However, it's a different story with acorns, etc. The leaf vacuum doesn't handle those. That's why it's called a leaf vacuum after all. Also, I'd like to quickly point out that it can even handle leaves that have been on the lawn for several days. You need to get a bit closer, but that's not a problem. And now, the ultimate test. Here's a pile of leaves, and you can see the leaf vacuum quickly sucks them in. In just a few seconds, the entire pile is gone, which would have taken much longer by hand. And finally, the battery check. Here we see that two bars are still remaining. At the beginning, the battery was full, and after about 15 minutes, it's halfway depleted. So a maximum of 30 minutes of working time is possible with this. And of course, we shouldn't forget the shredding function. I've collected all the leaves shown in the video here, and you can see that the volume is definitely much smaller than before, and the leaves are relatively finely shredded. So, in conclusion, would I recommend this device? Yes or no? Definitely yes. On one hand, it offers extreme power, up to 65 meters per second of airspeed, which is even a bit more than the previous version. The device is not necessarily lightweight as a leaf blower and not quiet at 95 decibels, but it can be converted into a leaf vacuum, which other devices certainly can't do. So, I can highly recommend this device to anyone who wants to not only blow leaves together, but also vacuum them up at the same time. Okay, that wraps it up. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. The current price is listed in the video description below. Thank you for your support and see you next time. Goodbye.